Well, it's tough, but you also understand at 98 years old, you know, that's a, a, a right he has as a human. But um, as far as the Maranatha Baptist Church family, uh, we're praying for the, the presence of uh, the presence family and, and all the people involved in that. It's, it's a very sad time um, for everybody, um, but we all knew it was going to have to come one day, but um, unfortunately we're there now. What did he mean to this church? What does he mean to this church? Well, he's the heartbeat of this church, aside from Jesus Christ. Um, you know, him teaching Sunday school, uh, whether it be once a month or twice a month, for years, decades, he brought people from all over the world. Um, we would see crowds of 500 plus people here having to turn people away just here to, to hear JC, um, but his obligation was to show him JC. And, uh, you know, Tony Loudon, who was the pastor here for a long time, had the saying that you came to see JC, but he wants you to see JC. So um, he, he really led a lot of people to Christ and shared the gospel of Jesus, and that was his main goal. Um, and, and if you stayed for Sunday school as well as Sunday service, him and his wife would pose for pictures for um, for a long time after that. I've, I've seen him sit in this sanctuary and pose for pictures for 30, 45 minutes just to make sure everybody um, had that opportunity to meet him as well. What was that like? He must have done that every Sunday? Uh, every Sunday he taught, he did that. And then a lot of Sundays, uh, even when he was just here not teaching, he would pose for pictures and greet visitors from around the world as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, always a smile on his face. Um, he loved to see his church family. He loved to talk about uh, Braves baseball, hunting, fishing, anything. Um, a lot of people know him as President Jimmy Carter, but um, the members of the church here, we know him as Mr. Jimmy, JC, Deacon, um, or more importantly, we know him as Fran. Absolutely. What must that have looked like on a typical Sunday morning with this sidewalk behind you? Well, the, <laughs> sometimes if you weren't here early enough on Friday night, you didn't, didn't get a number or a ticket in time to be getting in on uh, Sunday. So. Um, we turned hundreds of people away a lot of times. I know there was a particular Sunday when uh, President Carter and uh, Andrew Young, the ambassador, um, kind of split the service. And there was a very large crowd that day, and uh, we, we had to turn some people away. But it was unfortunate for that. But it was important for us as a church to be able to share the gospel and have that many people in here hearing the testimony of Jesus. What do you remember about his last Sunday school lesson? His last Sunday school lesson was on November the 3rd, 2019, and he talked about he was not scared to die. Um, he knew where his eternal place was, um, and he went on a good 45-minute spill about his faith and the importance of that faith. But little did all of us church members know sitting in there that that was going to be his last Sunday school lesson. So how fitting is it to know that his last public speech like that inside this church was in reference to his faith and his eternal life? That's just amazing. I'm going to hand you this now so you can talk to me about some of the things he, he's going to leave behind that, that really are precious things to this church. Sure, um, and what I have here is a offering plate that he made. Um, we use a whole set of these throughout the church, and, and if you'll notice, his initials are on the back um, from where he handcrafted these. Mm. Um, and, and the cross that hangs in the church as well is, is handcrafted by President Carter, as well as a, a table that sits in the vestibule here. How special is that? It's very special, um, but for a lot of us church members, it's, it's not the material things that are special. It's not really even the relationships with the former president that are special. It's the fact that somebody used a, one of the most powerful platforms in America or in the world for that fact. But when he came back home, just wanted to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and be a church member. He wanted to sit with the normal people. He wanted to worship Jesus just like the rest of us. And I think there's a testament to his character that really says um, how normal of a person he wanted to be. And he didn't want to be known as the president. He wanted to be known as the follower of Jesus Christ. Let's talk about Plains, Georgia for just a second. What did the Carter family, does the Carter family mean to Plains, Georgia? Carter family means a lot to Plains, Georgia. Um, you know, obviously the, a lot of tourism becomes from uh, visiting the hometown of the president and the first lady, but um, certainly that'll continue on in the legacy and people will always want to visit where, um, where the former president's from, as well as um, a remarkable man and a Nobel Peace Prize winner for that fact. It gets left out a lot of times when we're talking about his legacy lately. I mean, we're talking about a very small town with a few hundred people, mm -hmm. and yet this man went on to become a state senator, governor, president. What a story. It's a remarkable story. It just goes to show that it, hard work pays off, and it doesn't matter where you're from um, when you put your ethics and uh, class in the right place. Going forward, what do you think Plains is going to do to remember this man? They'll do everything possible to remember this man. And a question I got asked yesterday is, where does his legacy start and finish? Um, his legacy obviously started many years ago, probably 1924 if we're being exact, but his legacy is never going to be finished here. Uh, the work of what he's got will always continue to go on.